Imagine playing for $10 million and the player sitting next to you is legend Tom Dwan. Do you go for the big bluff or fold under pressure? In this first hand, Tom calls an earlier position raise from the button with ace 10 of diamonds. Apicella in the big blind says fuck this and puts in the casual squeeze with 10-3 off. No, but like legitimately, this is, this takes so much guts. So many guts. And... I'm really impressed that he took this spot. These commentators are gonna kill me. I mean, what do you mean took this spot? He has 10-3 off. He's really unlucky. <laughs> He's not loving life. Boy, yeah. I, hope, I, I wanna see a 10 come down and see what happens. Oh my god. Oh. Forget about the 10, Tom flops the nut flush. Well. Good in things. Yeah, that'll about do it. I, I assume... He's got to try once, you know, he's yeah, find out what Dwan has. There will be a C-bet here. But... Putting on his best suspicious furrowed brow is Tom Dwan and calling. That brow is quite furrowed right now. Apicella C bets and Tom calls, and the turn comes the nine of spades. Apicella is still all gas, no breaks. Apicella doesn't have a diamond in his hand. Wow, he's continuing. The furrowed brow is bringing these chips forward right now. I guess so. This size is quite large given how much Tom has behind. Yeah, that's a big bet. About half of Tom's stack. Saving himself some chips at some point. Yeah, and I, I also feel like he can either bet a little bit smaller now and shove River, or he can make the big bet now, but then you can't really depend on getting the bluff through on the River for only 200 into what will end up being about a million chip pot. So when he picks this size, I think he's just hoping this works, and if it doesn't, he's going to be likely to shut it down, given the price that a bluff on the River would be giving Tom. For Tom, this is just a call. Tom is playing his role to the nth degree, and Kevin Pollock would be proud. I imagine Tom was tanking even longer than shown here as we see multiple cuts from the cameras. He knows timing tells are real, and it's important not to just call here so quickly. Yeah, he's really milking it. I like this. Uh, there's no way, I, I think, there's no way that Tom goes all in here. You want to keep bluffs in there, and there's... That's the thing, I'm wondering. He... he can't really put up the Tella on diamonds, right? I mean, I mean that would be a perfect scenario. No, the only the only reason Tom might consider shoving is because he thinks this size is so big that it's just committing his opponent, and he wants to get the money in now before a bad card comes off. So, like, let's say his opponent has pocket aces without a diamond. Obviously, he can't have a diamond. Um, Tom wants to put the money in now before a diamond rolls off and his opponent gets away from the hand. Wow, snap shoves. Really? The river is the queen of clubs, and before we can even blink, Apicella announces all in while Tom snap goals. Oh my goodness, Tom Dwan is a player in the main event. Over a million chips. And he had a lot of help to get there. A lot of help to get there for sure, and possibly some more to come as he faces off with Apicella once again. Apicella raises from early position with King-10 off, and Tom calls from the big bun with Ace-6 of diamonds. The flop comes 9-7-7 with two diamonds, and once again, we see Apicella betting while Tom has the nut flush draw. Check. Nut flush draw. These two have clashed before. Fifteen thousand. Juan got most of his chips in a similar joust. Papichel is looking for redemption here. It's going to be tough. And it just got a lot more difficult. <laughs> it was diamonds against Apicella before, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Flush. He flopped the diamond flush. I believe so. Doesn't feel fair now, does it? No. It's like deja vu as Tom turns the nut flush, and yep, Apicella is tossing out monster beds with complete air. He's, <laughs> he's going to burn the day four tapes on Apicella. <laughs> yeah, this is this is tough. 
This might be a small advertisement for the power of blockers. <laughs> Just, you know, it would be nice to have a diamond in your hand when you're running this sort of bluff. And this is why. When you don't have a diamond in your hand, your opponent's just a little more likely to have diamonds. And Juan going through the same motions he did before. A little shorter acting job than he had before. Oh. The river is interesting as we see the seven of hearts. Any pair now becomes a full house, which of course would crush Tom's flush. But Apicella has to go for it. Will he put in the third barrel? Check, right? Indeed. Check, check. check, check. Again? Again? Nope. He quickly checks back and gives up. Probably the smarter move. Despite Tom managing to chip up significantly from this aggression, he ironically lasted less time in the tournament than Apicella, busting 593rd place for $32,500. Next up, a billionaire tries his luck. Meet Stanley Tang, DoorDash co-founder, going head-to-head -head with Duan in a star-studded high-stakes cash game. Starting off, Tom three bets from the small blind with the third best starting hand in poker, Pocket Queens. Everyone folds, but Stanley, however, has 10 deuce suited and, well, He's in there. I have to imagine Doyle Brunson being at the table has something to do with this. But for better or worse, let's see a flop. I'm very unbalanced. Every time I raise, I just fold when people three bet. I'm just right in mock. Patrick folded King I'm 10. I'm very unbalanced. I will call every time. And unbalanced Stanley. <laughs> what was that? Gives Tom a loose call. I can't get any more players, Paul. Dog complains that there's only seven players. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Another deuce for Tang. Seven four deuce. Stanley flops a pair, which is pretty much the nuts when you have ten deuce. Duan bets yeah, twenty two grand. Number? Tom bets big, and Stanley makes a call. The turn isn't great for Tom. The Jack of Diamonds. Third diamond. Mm -hmm. With no diamond himself, he's got to be somewhat worried about the flush. He checks. Stanley sees this as an opportunity and bets big. Before betting, though, I will say Stanley does tons of weird movements that you should pay attention to. The commentators do a great job of pointing them out, and you have to know a guy like Tom Dwan is watching them all. Stanley looks like he's tempted. Yeah. He is. Grabbing those chips, what's he got? Mm. He's got a lot. Yeah. Kind of, whoop. Balk. <laughs> yeah, that was a balk. A lot of movement. He bets 40000 As compared to the previous hands we saw, which were layups for Tom, a call here isn't so easy. An overpair with no diamond is really not so strong by this point, so he is proceeding with caution. We get this beautiful split screen of the billionaire and the pro as Tom makes his decision. Tom doesn't have a diamond. Queen of hearts, queen of clubs. Phil Ivey's interested in this hand. I'm going here on the 15th, I think. Yeah, i play it, sure. And Juan makes the call. Yeah. And seven pairs the board. Okay, let's be honest. We knew Tom was calling the turn, but let's see what happens on the river. And Will Stanley fire again. All in. Oh. All in. I would consider that a fire. Yes, one hundred sixteen thousand. I gotta get on it. And atypical for how Stanley has played so far. Yes. Do you want to ask for a count? 116K into 156K. Stanley does go for it, and Tom looks like he is in agony. If this works, Stanley will be a legend getting to show 10 deuce right in front of Doyle's face as he bluffs a super pro. If it doesn't, well, just like Apicella, at least he can say he went for it. Tom is in the tank. Let's see if the amateur can finally get one through. Don't think Tom can call. I don't think he will call. Somebody that I like. <laughs> Just really feels like you got it. Yeah, Stanley is telling a good story. Yeah. Oh. Okay. 
Doyle, tribute. What a great call. Doyle's sitting there thinking, don't get me involved. I love the part where Tom thinks Stanley's got it and then basically Insta calls. I'm not really a live tell guy, and I think Tom often calls here anyways, but I also think Stanley gave off some clear signs of nervousness in this one. Here he takes a big gulp, for example, when getting called on the turn. And Juan makes the call. And Juan makes the call. Look at the live tell master, Daniel Negrano, watching. He knows what's up. 